Mike Rogers was 20 years as a legislator. He voted for every single ban, every restriction, every bill that came across his desk to make it harder for a woman and to ban, in some cases, a woman and her right to choose. 56 times in total. We checked the math. To me, every single time he was casting one of those votes, he was saying something very particular. He was saying to women, he does not trust you to make your own decisions about your own family planning every single time. When it comes to our rights and protecting ourselves, I think it is important that we have someone in the seat who does that. He voted and sponsored bills that would make it impossible to have IVF and contraception. If he does not trust us to protect our own rights, do not trust him. So I was here in Michigan and I voted yes on Proposition 3. You were in Florida. You voted in Florida. You weren't here. For some people, this issue is a talking point. He's put his finger in the wind and he says, now I can't win if I don't you know, look good on this issue. And so he's changed 30 years of being unilaterally pro-life, of never breaking once with his party on this issue. Right? So to, it's not a talking point to women. It is our lives. It's whether we bleed to death in a parking lot. It's who and when gets to decide how we have a family. Do not trust him. That's Alyssa Slotkin, the Democratic nominee for the U.S. Senate in Michigan, making short work of Mike Rogers, her Republican opponent. And that's because, now that Rogers is in the general election, he's suddenly trying to frame himself as more palatable, more moderate to the electorate on the issue of abortion. He's not. And the only thing worse than his avowed extremism on that issue is the fact that he is also a liar. In fact, this isn't the only issue that Mike Rogers has been contending with right now. According to the Detroit Free Press, it's unclear that Rogers even lives where he says he lives in the state of Michigan. Quote, Rogers, the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate, changed his voter registration on July 2nd to a home in White Lake Township that is under construction. A month later, he used the White Lake address to vote, presumably for himself, in the four-way race for the GOP nomination to replace retiring U.S. Senator Dabby Stabenow. There's just one problem. The House did not, and still does not, have a certificate of occupancy. That means Rogers could not live there legally. And if he didn't live there, he may have broken the law by using that address to vote. So between his residency scandal and his inability to tell the truth about one of the most important issues facing voters right now, it's pretty clear what kind of a senator Mike Rogers would be. And it's not just Mike Rogers. David McCormick, the Republican Senate nominee in Pennsylvania, is doing virtually the same thing. Here he is trying to wave away the issue of abortion at his latest debate with Democratic Senator Bob Casey. I'm not going to take any um, preaching from Senator Casey on my position on abortion. And um, and it's something that uh, we need to get, get past. That women have to get past their concerns about abortion bans. And if you're wondering why McCormick is so eager to get past this issue, it's probably because he doesn't want to acknowledge his own comments on the matter from the primary. Mr. McCormick, Roe versus Wade is overturned. How about you? Exceptions in your view? I, b I believe in the very rare instances there should be exceptions for, for life of the mother. Not even an exception for rape or incest. That is how extreme David McCormick is. And he's running for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania. And yet now, of course, because he's in the general, we have the inevitable softening, the pivot to the center. These people stand for nothing but saying whatever they have to say and doing whatever they have to do to consolidate power for themselves. They have the spines of one of those used car lot inflatable men, which is to say, they stand for nothing. And by the way, when I say that David McCormick and Mike Rogers are facing virtually the same issues, I meant it. Because just like Rogers is contending with a residency scandal, so is David McCormick. You cannot make this up. McCormick is being hammered because he normally lives in Connecticut and reportedly hasn't even voted in Pennsylvania in the last 16 years. This is a unique race in lots of ways. Not simply because he lied to the people of our state about where he lives. He told them over and over and over again, all throughout 2022, all throughout 2023, even before he was a candidate, that he lived in Pennsylvania, he said it over and over again. Then on August, not that I remember, but August the 14th of 2023, <laughs> the Associated Press wrote a story that said, actually, he lives in Connecticut. Uh, and they had, they, had, uh, they had evidence to prove that. So that, that's become a major issue because if you haven't been here, if you've been, he's been, he didn't vote in the state for 15 years. If you haven't been here, you're not going to understand the state and you should not lie to the people that you seek to represent. I think that's a pretty low bar. And it's not, it's not just that he lives in Connecticut now. He's also been a little fuzzy, should we say, about the family farm he grew up on and a bunch of other things, right? 
Yeah. He said, the New York Times wrote this story where they talked about, where the New York Times recounted what he was saying when he was a candidate for the Senate in 2022. He said at one point something to the effect that he came from nothing, he had nothing. His father was a university president. And when you, literally, it was called Bloomsburg College, then now it's Bloomsburg University. When you're president of a college or university, you usually get a house. They got a house, right? So he had a pretty good upbringing, but then later he even went further and said, because his family owned a farm and he spent some time on it, he actually said at one point, I'm a farmer, <laughs> which is, I mean, that's, that's really interesting the way he brought that into the conversation. I mean, I'm sorry, but is it a prerequisite to live in some state other than the one you're running to represent if you're trying to be a U.S. Senator for the GOP? Let's not forget that in 2022, Herschel Walker lived in Texas and then moved to Georgia just to run for the Senate there. You might remember that he too decided to be pro-life for the GOP primary, only for it to be revealed that he'd personally paid for an abortion. Another carpet-bagging hypocrite lying about abortion for his own political gain. Also in 2022, Dr. Oz lived in New Jersey and yet ran for the Senate in Pennsylvania. And on the issue of abortion, well, here's what Oz had to say about who should be litigating a woman's bodily autonomy. I want women, doctors, local political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. Yep, you know the old saying, how women's reproductive rights should be between a woman and her doctor and local political leaders. That's right, if your doctor's office doesn't also have your state senator and assembly member, maybe the town council, county clerk, then we're just not doing it right. The truth is that Republicans are not looking to run people who care about the states they're supposed to represent. That is not their priority. Their priority, frankly, is getting rich people from wherever they can find them who are willing to espouse the GOP's dangerous, anachronistic agenda and have them self-fund their campaigns so that Republicans more broadly can use their other money elsewhere. I mean, this isn't hard. Herschel Walker was rich. Dr. Oz was an ultra-wealthy TV star. David McCormick is a multi-millionaire managing one of the world's biggest hedge funds. And as for Mike Rogers, according to the Michigan Democrats, has a potential maximum of $11.3 million in assets that he controlled or he and his wife jointly controlled. Old, wealthy men who live out of state looking to buy their seats in the U.S. Congress where they will strip people of their rights, all in exchange for power. There is a reason that voters rejected Oz and Walker, and it's the same reason that they're going to reject McCormick in PA and Rogers in Michigan this November. Before you go, just a quick note, if you'd like to see more of my content, which is always free of advertising, sponsorships, and paywalls, please make sure to subscribe to this channel using the subscribe button right here on the screen. And if you'd like to support my work even further, you can grab a copy of my instant number one New York Times selling book, Shameless, available for sale right now. That link is also on the screen. Thanks so much for watching.